Additionally, the gun method for detonation that used uranium was almost guaranteed to work to the point where they felt like testing it was a waste of precious uranium-235. And mm. if you're the author that wrote an entire book trying to debunk the fact that there was a bombing at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you just have to understand they did test it to see if it could work. There was, it was already there. You're, you're fighting, already, you're fighting with sense, shadows, they buddy. Knew, they already knew. You're fighting yeah. with shadows. No one, <laughs> no one knew that that book existed. I'm so I don't think that author is still alive. I don't know. However, the implosion method using plutonium, that was far more complicated, and plutonium was easier to produce. So a full-scale test was planned to see if the Manhattan Project could go two for two. Oh, wow. Now, the name chosen for the test, Trinity, that was a deliberate choice made by Robert Oppenheimer. So nerdy. It was very nerdy. It was inspired by a poem about death by World War I poet John Donne. Beautiful writer, by sure. the way. But this poem contemplated the idea that while dying leads to death, mm -hmm. it might also lead to resurrection. This was tied mm. to the false hope that Manhattan Project scientists like Niels Bohr held onto in order to justify developing an atomic weapon, reasoning that nuclear weapons were so destructive that they could end all wars. Unfortunately, Niels Bohr had not been familiar with the concept of a proxy war. I was oh. trying to say that we should name it Gunther because that's my wife's name, but she's a fucking bitch. Your wife's name is Gunther? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a weird one. Yeah, she's a masculine wife. I understand why you spend so much time or working in science. <laughs> now, before the bomb was even tested, B-29 bombers were already training themselves to drop these massive seven-ton weapons on specific targets. What do you got to train? You drop the fucking thing, dude. Well, you gotta Isn't it mostly gravity that does the work in this case? A lot goes into it. I really want to send you, because I truly can't- Hit the button, drop the thing. I was going to say, <laughs> there was a part of me that was just like, truly, like, oh, you know, it's the same as any bombing, bombing run. They had to completely refigure the planes. They had to develop a whole delivery yeah. mechanism. They had to do, they had to train because- the way of dropping the style of bombs was completely different than any other type They're of bomb. They're going to do a pirouette? What are they up to? Because they have to get away from it as fast as possible. Sure. It's how you drop it. It has to be dropped and detonated to a certain height. And also the actual payloads of it are much heavier yeah. than any other type of bomb. And then also they were talking about like the fail safe shit. It's very, it's crazy. There's a lot of shit. Mm. There's a lot of stuff like, what if the bomb doesn't work? What if the bomb doesn't release? All of a sudden you're flying. You've got this thing now is now set to explode. You have this like set, the, like this way to like, you're supposed to disengage it. Like the implosion bomb they said would actually survive. They thought maybe that if it fell out of a plane and it landed and was a dud, it would be fine. And that like the, the center of it would hold but the trigger one was so vulnerable that if it mm -hmm. basically if it fell and didn't break it could if, if it fell and didn't go off it could break open and then just create a thousand years of radiation poisoning well, in a, a place that exists so they then had to they would have to crawl inside of the gun mechanism but inside of the bomb pull the gun mechanism out of it and then release it whatever's left it's very scary yeah well you just got to have someone who you know you got to have a little bitch that does that. <laughs> oh no and that little yeah. bitch was like there was a guy that was that guy yeah, yeah. and he was not pleased no. no i'm sure not we'll talk about him later all right fantastic yeah. and we uh i think we did actually accidentally like remember there's that story of the uh i think i guess it had to have been an implosion bomb that was accidentally dropped and like North Carolina. Oh, yeah. yeah that just that's happened. Right. That happened. Yeah. I forgot Relatively about recently. That. Yeah. Now, for the mission to drop the atomic bomb on Japan, the Manhattan Project tapped a 29 year old pilot named Paul Tibbetts. Tibbetts had survived countless bombing missions over Germany and had a year's experience flying the relatively new B 29s. Mm. He was given a 45 minute long briefing that explained what the bomb was just a little bit, insofar as the scientist briefing him asked Tibbetts, hey, do you know what an atom is? Uh, is it? Oh, yeah. Adam's my uh, brother Steve's uh, friend. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I got a 45 minute training video via hip hop lyrics <laughs> when I worked at Wendy's. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Tippett said, Yeah, I know, what it's, I know what an atom is. Yeah. Yeah. And the scientist said, Good. That's all you need to know. What? Uh, no, no, no. I need to know more than that. <laughs> that's all he needs to know. <laughs> then, supposedly, the scientist wrapped up the conversation in a particularly 1940s cinematic fashion. He said, quote, You've got a lot of responsibility. If you use it wrong or if you fail, I can see you winding up in prison. Otherwise, you might be a hero. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. This is going to be great. I'm going to have a parade. <laughs> and so, starting in December of 1944, Tibbets began flying missions over Japan in B-29s loaded with so-called pumpkin bombs huh. that were roughly the same size and weight of an atomic bomb. 
Much like the Fat Man bomb, each pumpkin bomb was about 10 feet long, 5 feet in circumference, and it weighed about 5 tons. <laughs> Man, it's a hell of a pumpkin. I definitely would get super nervous as I'm sitting in the rolling hills of Japan, watching them drop these giant, like, obviously fake bombs, right? Like, these <laughs> yeah. fake bombs are landing, and you're like, oh, that looks like a pretty big bomb. And it's like, oh, they're right. practicing for what are they practicing? <laughs> very uh, large scale, sort of a green goblin approach. Yeah, I suppose. very similar. Yeah, yeah. They must have been like, what? The, what are they up to? It's not good. It well, can't be good. Well, some of them were inert. Some though were filled with explosives. Just so for fun. Really, yeah, just for fun, just because to see what would happen. We're already bombing them. Yeah. Well, yeah. But the main point of a pumpkin bomb was to make sure that the pilot didn't drop a two billion dollar weapon on the outskirts of the target, or worse, from a funding perspective, in the middle of the ocean. Think of the funding. <laughs> of course, you always have to. How is Epstein going to give us more money after this? <laughs> I don't know. You, you, oh, you have to, uh, come on my face. <laughs> <laughs> As such. 49 training missions were flown with a variety okay. of B-29s, all with colorful names that were sometimes a bit too conspicuous. Yeah. You had Ooh. Strange Cargo. <laughs> sounds like a fun movie with Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> These all sound like the super tough condoms they sell at like various, like, you know, very shady sex stores. Yeah, yeah the ones where it's like it's like a rough rider, and I'm yeah. like, I'm yeah. not DMX. Yeah. I don't think I need that yeah, one. It's like like Ryu having sex with Chun Li, but all you see <laughs> oh, is Ryu's my. ass, and it's weird. <laughs> oh, 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 hello. <laughs> Another plane? Top secret. Oh, what's in that? Yeah. That is ridiculous. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. Fantastic 80s spoof uh, det- uh, uh, spy movie, though. Yeah. You had one called Big Stink. <laughs> that is just an insult. Yeah. It's an insult to everyone on that fucking yeah. plane. Uh, one called The Great Artiste. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You, you had Necessary Evil. Okay. Now we're getting on the fucking <laughs> nose. Yeah. All right. Uh, exactly. What is this? A football movie? Yeah. And most conspicuously, up and Adam. That's the I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> they know I, uh, it's you, If you kill me but before you have, if you do deliver a pun before you shoot me in the fucking head, I'm going to be so pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but one of the problems with dropping a big, horribly expensive bomb on Japan was that there was still one island with a very active Japanese airstrip between the American air base of Saipan and the Japanese mainland. I thought you were going to say one problem might be the death of all the innocent people, but no, okay. <laughs> funding. So think of the funding. Think, think of the funding. Of the funding. Think of the practicalities. I do think that we can all... That is the Pentagon. Every meeting. Think of the funding. Oh, yeah. it's every meeting, yeah. Well, that island where the airstrip was located... That became the site of the deadliest day in Marine Corps history. Uh, it became a byword for victory at high cost, perseverance whilst wading through the blood of your comrades, and most of all, the savagery of warfare. War is hell. Are that, we getting into the sloughing now? <laughs> no, Slough, soon. Sloughing? Too late, soon. Okay. That island was none other than Iwo Jima. That's the oh. only way you can say it, too. I found that. I've tried to say Iwo Jima. You know what was? <laughs> in any other way, but I can't. It's History Channel voices in there. Yeah. I can't get rid of it because, again, if you want to get your fucking, if your grandpa is still alive, he's about 90 at this mm, point. Yeah. If you want to get him going, just go two words. Iwo Jima. One thing that was staged was that goddamn picture that went uh, viral even before the internet. Yeah. Of the flag. Now, that was, was actually a staged picture. Oh, yeah. they all were. They and, had to because it was them winning and then they, they would go and yeah. make it, an official winning thing. It wasn't winning. It was like on the third day of battle. Like, they just arrived. They did the, the Super Bowl shuffle. And if the Bears <laughs> didn't win the Super Bowl, that would be they would be laughing. Yeah. It's literally, it's, yeah. like, it's pre-shooting all the stuff yeah. for New Year's Eve. <laughs> they really did. Although while it was staged, the Johnny Cash song, The Ballad of Ira Hayes, oh. was very real. That was uh, about one of the guys Johnny who is. did raise the flag on Iwo Jima. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, Ira Call Hayes. him drunken Drink- Ira, Ira Hayes. He, he don't come here anymore. He's a drunken I know, and I something. I all my buddies <laughs> <Something> about <laughs> that. Iwo Jima. Jima. Yeah, something about that. Yeah, yeah. Now, Iwo Jima was a hideous place oh. covered in relatively soft volcanic rock. Not to, you know, not to offend all the people in Iwo Jima. Of course not. Did a lot of people live there? Uh, very few, yeah. but some did. It's pretty kind of farmland, I thought. But in strategic terms, Iwo Jima was incredibly important to the Pacific theater of the war because it was dead center between Tokyo and the island of Saipan, which we talked about at the end of episode two. Mm. Saipan, you know, all the Marianas Islands were the largest airport in the world 
existed at this time. Saipan okay. was the one where th- all the people jumped off the cliffs when we were coming because they thought we were going to like we were going to go whole hog. Yeah. And then that was where Oof. we would launch the Enola Gay. Yeah. And Tinian was the cute one that was shaped like the island of Manhattan and they named all the streets after isle- after streets in New York City. That's, That's real fun. It's really fun. <laughs> that is fun.